Clearly, the markets are opening up and the forces of economic liberalization and globalization are underway. These are forces that are relentless, forces that are irreversible. And now that India is a signatory to the WTO agreement, there is no economic activity in the country which will remain unaffected. Surely, the biggest challenge will be faced by the small and medium enterprises, or SMEs. That's because they are far more vulnerable. Small and medium enterprises are vulnerable and threatened not because of their size, but because of the isolation. Every firm, in order to be competitive, does require specialized services, whether they are in the field of designing, training, expertise, which are very specialized in nature. And since all these services are not available within the small firm, therefore they have this problem of competitiveness. So what can be done to reduce this isolation so that SMEs can compete on a global footing? The United Nations Industrial Development Organization, or UNIDO for short, has been exploring an innovative approach in order to achieve this objective. The UNIDO cluster development approach draws inspiration from the fact that successful SMEs offering a specific product or service normally operate in clusters. In other words, they're located in one geographical area. This clustering increases their competitive strength. Operating within a cluster, SMEs have several advantages. They have easier access to machinery and raw materials because the cluster itself attracts suppliers of these products. Workers with sector-specific skills flock to clusters as there are adequate employment opportunities. Transport operators too gather in such areas because there is a lot of movement of goods. Buyers also find it advantageous to approach clusters rather than isolated firms. Significantly, they provide a constant feedback to the SMEs and as a result, these enterprises have a better grasp of consumer needs and trends. The leather, jewelry and textile clusters in northern and central Italy are examples of vibrant clusters as is the Silicon Valley in the United States. But then these successful clusters are not a monopoly of only the developed world. They are also there in the developing countries. Let us lay, take the example of Chile for woodworking or for that matter Tirupuri in India which is a famous cluster for textiles. A UNIDO study revealed that in India there are around 350 urban small-scale industrial clusters and 2,000 rural artisan ones. All in all, these clusters contribute as much as 35% of the Indian manufacturing exports. This figure may seem impressive, but it must be stressed that only a few clusters are really dynamic. The Tirupur cluster is one of them. The small town of Tirupur in South India is home to one of the most dynamic SME clusters of the world. It produces cotton hosiery products like t-shirts, sweatshirts, sportswear and children's garments. There are more than 7,000 units here and they employ over 250,000 men and women. Impressively, around 80% of the cotton hosiery exported from India comes from this cluster alone. In 1999, the Tirupur cluster exported hosiery worth 650 million US dollars to very demanding markets in Japan, USA and Europe. So what explains the phenomenal success of the Tirupur cluster? The phenomenal success of Tirupur is often attributed to various factors, which are logical. It is demanding markets that they are linked to, it is easier access to the capital. It is high level of technology standards that they have adopted. It is very good quality standards that they have. But none of these factors could have taken place in case of Tirupur without an element of trust and cooperation, which is the underlying cause. And this is exactly what defines the success of Tirupur cluster and many other dynamic clusters. In Tirupur, there is ample evidence of entrepreneurs collaborating with each other and initiating a number of collective ventures. The India Knitwear Pavilion is one of them. 
There are around 250 stalls here and during fairs, firms get a good opportunity to showcase their products. As a result, the pavilion has helped entrepreneurs interact directly with buyers from abroad and negotiate deals in Tirupur itself. This pavilion was set up by the Tirupur Exporters Association that has put up half the money for the project. If you want to conduct a fair, individually it is not possible. You have to have a collection of people or a number of people, but as an association we can easily do it. So the people believe that once the association brings out a project, it is for everybody. It is not for any uh, president or for the office bearers. So that belief they have, that trust they have. This inland container freight station is another case in point. Once again, the capital required for this container station was raised by the association itself. This was a daunting task considering that it is spread over an area of 3.2 acres and can load as well as unload 12 containers at a time. This has helped the cluster eliminate pilferage of export cargo, minimize wrong dispatches and reduce delays. The dispatch system now works more efficiently because the association has managed to persuade the government to post some custom officials here. As a result, all the formalities related to customs are cleared in Tirupur itself. However, getting the permission from the government was not all that easy. Through our association, we moved the central government. And after struggle, persuasion and all that, we were able to get it over a period of time. It is evident that mutual trust amongst entrepreneurs has given them a great deal of leverage. As a result, other important cluster members like banks, financial institutions and other specialist service providers have been collaborating with the Tirupur entrepreneurs. This has allowed the cluster to initiate other ambitious collective projects like the common effluent treatment plants, a sprawling industrial estate and a well-equipped institute of fashion technology. However, most of the other clusters in India are not as dynamic as the Tirupur one. What really can be done to revitalize such clusters? The problem of the underachieving clusters is a low level of trust and cooperation. And if this can be removed by a series of systematic measures, then the cluster will become dynamic and successful. We have developed a systematic cluster development approach which has certain key components. As a first step of the cluster development approach, we need to understand what the real needs are. This is done with the help of a diagnostic study. And this is not yet another conventional study of a depressed area to understand what the problems are. This is a very participatory kind of a study, where the people themselves are involved to understand the gaps and what needs to be done. After the diagnostic study, we try and assess the hidden potential of the cluster given the current market situation and the aspiration level of the key actors. In order to realize this potential, we need an action plan. The action plan is not ours, it is of the people themselves and we help them to draft it. The initiatives which are a part of the action plan are not ad hoc and random measures. These are those initiatives which help to realize the potential. In order to implement the various initiatives which are a part of the action plan, we need vehicles, local vehicles, such as industry associations, self-help groups, consortia and cooperatives. And in many cases, these vehicles may be missing, so we may have to create them. Uh, implementation of one action plan is not sufficient. What is required is the capacity building of various institutions and other cluster actors to be able to take up more complex initiatives as a part of the action plan. 
and UNIDO does not provide direct assistance to individual firms as a part of capacity building exercise, nor does it provide financial resources as the only thing to the various cluster actors. What it essentially does is that with the complexity of the initiatives increasing, the hand holding which is required by UNIDO to help the various cluster actors network among themselves and to utilize their own resources in a more effective fashion is the end result that we tend to achieve through the capacity building process. Sustainability is an inbuilt component of all the actions which are undertaken as a part of cluster development approach. When the individual institutions and their ability to network with others to respond to the new challenges has been achieved, that is the signature of the sustainability of the cluster having been achieved. In other words, the cluster has the potential to respond to the new challenges and cope with them even long after UNIDO has withdrawn. Walking through the narrow lanes in the old part of Ludhiana is quite an experience. There are signs of industrial activity everywhere and knitwear is one of the key products. The 100-year-old Ludhiana knitwear cluster has its roots in these older parts of the city. Many units have also come up in the newer areas. Some, like this one, have well-organized shop floors and state-of-the-art technology. Others continue operating at a much smaller scale. All in all, there are around 10,000 SMEs in Ludhiana employing well over 250,000 people. UNIDO started its cluster development program in Ludhiana in 1997 with a diagnostic study. The diagnostic study of Ludhiana showed very clearly that Ludhiana is a primary producer for low value added items, catering to the lower end of the domestic market. And this is primarily because of the cheap labor. And that particular advantage was also being overrun because of the entry of China and Nepal coming to India and entering into the global market. As it so happened, the cluster members were finding it difficult to come to grips with the situation. Their association was very weak. In fact, the associations did not do any developmental activities and only went into requesting for tax cuts and subsidies. And this is what led to very poor linkages with the institutions also. There was a very high degree of mistrust among the entrepreneurs. As I said, the first place was the manufacturers who had never met each other. The mistrust was somebody will pinch my master, somebody will pinch my worker, that type of a mistrust was there. Despite all these problems that were identified by the diagnostic study, there was a positive outlook too. What also emerged was that the Ludhiana cluster had the potential to achieve international competitiveness and to increase its share in the national market. Realization of the potential of a cluster requires an external catalyst, namely the cluster development agent who brings about the various cluster actors around an agreed common action plan. But this in turn requires breaking down the isolation and this can only be done through building trust. Sustained efforts by UNIDO led to the formation of a new association called the Apparel Exporters Association of Ludhiana or APEAL for short. This was significant because the exporters did not have any organization to look after their needs and interests, particularly in the changing global scenario. We thought it was a good idea to take the entrepreneurs of Ludhiana to the other clusters in Europe as well as the one in Tirupur. And I must say the entire costs were borne by the entrepreneurs themselves. By this way, they could have the opportunity to see how the actors in the other clusters had solved collectively their own problems. At the individual level too, these trips were to be an eye-opener. Actually, it was that we didn't do comparison. What are we doing? How do we think? Here is a comparison. I mean, whether it was with the customers, whether it was with the designers, or with the units. That comparative study is what we got to see and listen to. We got to see outside. We are doing what we are doing. 
बाहर हमसे ज़्यादा बेहतर कर रहे हैं इसीलिए हमें भी सोच हमारी भी इस तरफ आई कि हम क्यों नहीं कर सकते जबकि हम बहुत अच्छा कर सकते हैं Capacity building is in fact another crucial component of the UNIDO cluster development approach. UNIDO has helped the entrepreneurs to participate in workshops and training programs on skill and technology upgradation, production design and quality management, information technology, financial management, as well as brand building and marketing. The entrepreneurs invariably contribute towards organizing these training programs. Financial and technical support is also frequently drawn from Indian institutions operating in the field of SME support like SIDBI or the Small Industries Development Bank of India. It must be emphasized that capacity building can be effective only if it is need-based. For instance, the Ludhiana cluster was found to be suffering from a shortage of trained and skilled workers. How then could such a problem be addressed? In such a situation, we always believe that there is need to draw upon the local resources. In this specific situation of Ludhiana, there was a government polytechnic for women which had all the resources required to take care of the problems of the labor shortages. But they were not simply being utilized. This is because the entrepreneurs and the government polytechnic for women simply did not know each other. There were no linkages. Unless we know the requirement of the industry, we can't the, impart the training to the students accordingly. When we know exactly the need of the industry, only then we can mold our curriculum, etc. And accordingly, we can uh, build up the gap. UNIDO helped to bridge this gap by bringing appeal and the polytechnic together. What resulted was an innovative program for training women workers at the same institution. This program is clearly need-based because the appeal members have themselves given suggestions about the exact skills that they would require from their workers. The entire curriculum was laid down by the team of the member and uh, the program was laid down from day one. On day one this would be the syllabus, on day two this would be the syllabus on three this would be the syllabus. So this was something like a 30 days program which would be duplicated over 60 days or 90 days as per the need. This project was actually designed uh, by the industry and uh, run by the industry. Appeal has also provided the equipment for the training program. Finding strength in this partnership between industry and the polytechnic, the Department of Science and Technology Government of India has endorsed this training program by providing financial support. In this particular program, what has happened is that the industry has participated not only financially, but also technologically. They have provided the equipment, they have provided the machinery. And what happens that when the industry participates, there is a periodical upgradation of the skills, so that the workers are ever ready to face the new technological challenges. So that is why I say that uh, this program has better chances of being sustainable and a stable program. Significantly, all the women undergoing this three-month course come from a poor background. Around a hundred of them have picked up skills here and all have been absorbed by the industry. This training program is a clear example of what entrepreneurs can achieve when they start trusting each other and collaborating. This would simply have been impossible a few years ago. Nobody was talking to each other freely. It has started a little bit now with more of UNIDO's interaction. We are more open to each other. We don't mind talking about our buyers, our prices, their conduct and other things, our problems. We, some of us have even started helping each other in, if I'm stuck in something, somebody is willing to help me. The big question is, whether such a turnaround in sentiment can be achieved in an artisan cluster as well. Quaint, magical, enchanting. That is how the block printing cluster in Jaipur appears at first glance. More than 350 units appear frozen in time 
as they continue using handcrafted blocks and mostly vegetable dyes to create colorful printed fabrics which are exported to many parts of the world. However, the UNIDO diagnostic study showed that not all was well with this cluster. It revealed that block printers had limited design and marketing skills. Quality control was poor and the cluster members had limited access to credit. Importantly, linkages between the artisans, support institutions and exporters were weak. Moreover, the artisans had started facing a strong competition from screen printers. This technology was 20 times faster and made use of cheaper chemical dyes. They replicated the same designs that the hand block printers used and only a trained eye could tell the difference. We felt that the cluster had a tremendous amount of potential primarily because the products were eco-friendly and the designs were rooted in the local traditions. In the artisan cluster of Jaipur, Unido motivated the artisans to organize themselves into small collectives called self-help groups. These groups are managed entirely by the artisans themselves. Using the collective will as a guideline, they decide their priorities and how resources should be allocated. After all, there's a shared pool of money to be managed because every member contributes 100 rupees every month. However, it has not been easy for UNIDO to dispel the sense of mistrust amongst artisans and motivate them to get together. When a cluster development agent goes into the cluster, the first question that people ask him is, how much money have you brought? What is the scheme? How can I get this money from you? And it's very difficult to persuade them that, no, we do not have a packet of money. We are here to help you, help yourself. <laughs> Despite all the initial hurdles, the self-help groups are active in ways which were unimaginable a few years ago. और जैसे आगे कोई भी चीज की किसी को भी कोई जरूरत हो उसकी हेल्प करने की कोशिश करते हैं कोई आदमी यदि ज्यादा एजुकेटेड है यदि उसको हम बाहर भेजें कि मार्केटिंग करने का इसको अच्छा तजुर्बा है तो वो उसको मार्केटिंग के लिए भेजते हैं तो हमारे को इससे मतलब धंधा बढ़ेगा हमारा बिजनेस इज इंडीड बिगिनिंग टू फ्लरिश फॉर इंस्टेंस रिसेंटली दिस ग्रुप यूज्ड अ पार्ट ऑफ इट्स कॉर्पस ऑफ फंड्स टू हायर अ स्टॉल ड्यूरिंग अ क्राफ्ट्स एग्जीबिशन इन दिल्ली हमारे को 30,000 का करीब प्रॉफिट हुआ है, जो हमने बैंक में अभी सुरक्षित इसलिए रख दिया कि कभी कोई जरूरत पड़ेगी तो फिर निकाल लेंगे, डिवाइड नहीं किया उस प्रॉफिट को हमने। The high cost of credit is indeed a burden for many artisans, whether they want to upgrade their production capacities or broaden their range of products. Now, because of the self-help groups, artisans have easier access to capital from banks and financial institutions. In case of individual borrower. The transaction cost of the bank goes up. In addition to that, the credit worthiness of the individual borrower is difficult to establish. So when they come in a group, the peer pressure works. One, has, uh, one can support each other. One can guarantee the other's loan. So when they come in the group, it becomes easier for the financial institution and bankers. To support the proposal. In Ludhiana, the cluster development approach helped in building bridges between the entrepreneurs and the training institute. In the case of Jaipur, the same approach has brought the artisans closer to financial institutions. In Jaipur, many artisans supply block printed fabrics to exporters. These exporters make a wide range of products like cushion covers, aprons, napkins and dresses and sell them in the international market. This linkage with a demanding market needed strengthening if the market had to grow. As in Ludhiana, Unido supported the exporters to get together and form a collective. This, however, was easier said than done. 
same people, same business, tough competition, throat cut, so many phrases we use for uh, competition. They meeting at one platform, sitting together, discussing. I mean, it was hard for me to swallow at that moment. But then, those were my doubts. They have been eradicated. It's a unique and a noble idea, a unique concept, and I see it flourishing day by day. These exporters were encouraged to participate in fairs and exhibitions abroad. Here they got a chance to get a feedback on their own products as also to build up contacts. हम लोग अकेले के तौर पर हम जाने का सोच ही नहीं सकते थे इसीलिए हमने तीन लोग ने साथ में मिलकर जाने का सोचा और हमने कैलिगो प्रिंटर्स कोऑपरेटिव सोसाइटी के नाम से हमने फ्लोरेंस फेयर में बूथ लिया उसके बाद में फिर हम दो दफा वहां पर जा चुके हैं उसके बाद को हमको यूनिडो के या किसी सपोर्ट की जरूरत नहीं पड़ी हम खुद अब वहां पर जाकर अपने उत्पाद को बेच सकते हैं ऐसी क्षमता हम में विकसित हुई दिस इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट वी हैड एक्सपेक्टेड दैट द क्लस्टर मेंबर्स गेट टुगेदर and take up independent initiatives on their own it is these kind of initiatives which indicate the sustainability of cluster development approach it is evident that unido has helped in breaking down isolation and enhancing collaboration in the clusters of jaipur and ludhiana consequently both clusters are better equipped to realize their potential this cluster development approach is also being implemented in five other clusters in India. Everywhere, the challenges are different, but the approach is flexible enough to adapt itself to the local conditions. It is the lessons which are important that are being drawn from the clusters that are being worked into. And these lessons are being translated into methodologies, structured methodologies, useful, professionally managed, which are then being translated into training modules to develop the cluster development agents from the government offices and institutions that are supposed to do this work. The training programs have already begun. Officers, professionals, and industry association office bearers are absorbing the principles of the cluster development approach. These programs, which are being conducted in association with the Entrepreneurship Development Institute of India, will help them acquire the necessary skills and attitudes so that they can become effective cluster development agents. Some states have already begun with the cluster development initiatives. Andhra Pradesh was probably the first one. This was followed by Rajasthan, which is doing its diagnostic study of 23 clusters. And very recently, government of Gujarat has allocated 50 crore rupees to develop 10 clusters on a pilot basis. I think this trend is going to continue. The concept of uh, cluster development, concept of change agent, concept of technology intervention, concept of capacity building, is being taken up by various agents. It's not now limited to us. To that extent, our job is, uh, you know, shared today. This sharing is indeed the need of the hour in the changing global scenario. After all, in most of these clusters, individual small firms are vulnerable. Only a coordinated effort by all the cluster actors, be it firms, banks, development institutions and other service providers will help revitalize a cluster. And for this, a trained development agent is needed to start and guide the transition of a cluster from underachievement to success. Unido's comprehensive approach for such cluster development agents is available to all institutions concerned with the well-being of SMEs. Indeed, this approach can be replicated in all kinds of clusters, strengthening them, energizing them, revitalizing them, and in the process helping small firms realize that the WTO regime is not a threat, but actually an opportunity.